I was absolutely terrified of public speaking. And leadership was something that I always felt was something that should be left to other people as a horrifying thing with little to gain. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and most welcome guests. Many years ago, my supervisor came to me, perhaps because he was aware of what Toastmasters could, benefits could provide. He had suggested to me that I should join Toastmasters to get out of my shell, basically, to become less shy and be able effectively to do my job a lot better. Now, he was familiar with Toastmasters because that's the time when the Chalk River Toastmasters Club at, at, at CNL was first being organized. So he was aware of what Toastmasters are like, perhaps could have been my first mentor if I had accepted it. But at the time, Toastmasters, well, public speaking in general terrified me. So I thought of Toastmasters as nothing but a bunch of sadists who would prop victims up in front of huge crowds and make them sweat blood. So needless to say, I didn't jump at the opportunity to join. Sometime later on, I did, fortunate for me, get a chance to see a recording, a video recording of a Toastmasters area contest. This had been recorded by a lady who later turned out to be my mentor. And it turned out very fortunate that I just one day, a lazy Saturday afternoon, I happened to be channel hopping, I came across this recording. Midway through it, I didn't really know what it was, anything like that, but I saw this gentleman on a makeshift stage, I think it was just a pallet, and he was describing his first skydiving adventure. He was standing on the edge of that little stage with his hands up in the air like this, as if he was holding on to the edges of a door frame of a plane high up in the sky. And then he leaned forward and did a little hop with them off the stage. And suddenly I was no longer seeing a gentleman give a, a speech on a stage, but actually seeing him jump out of an airplane doing his first skydive. I said, wow, could I have those sort of skills to speak like that in front of a group of people? I have to look into that. So later that week, I came across that same person who had put on this show or this recording of the contest. And I spoke to her about what I saw. And of course, she immediately recognized it as she had been putting it on. And she invited me to a not one, but two different clubs to drop in as a guest. One was the Pembrokean Area Toastmasters, sorry. One was the Ch Chalk River Toastmasters Club, which was the one I eventually joined. And the other was the Deep River Club, which later on I did drop in quite often as a guest. What I saw there, I felt so welcomed when I came in that I felt this was okay for me. All these very busy people made me feel welcome. I felt good. And of course, my mentor was there all the time to help me get ready. And even though it took a while and a lot of arm bending was required, eventually she got me to the top front of the room and I gave my icebreaker speech. It was probably the worst speech I ever did. I had every word I was going to say written out on the sheet of paper and I read every word, hardly looking up at all to see my audience. When I got through it, my note paper was drenched when I finished, but I got it done. And I remember my Toastmaster telling me, thank you, and congratulated me on giving my first icebreaker speech. And perhaps the rest of the meeting went by in a buzz. I don't remember much about it. I do recall, I think I recall the general evaluator or my speech evaluator congratulating me in doing it. And I'm sure they gave me some advice on what I should do. 
Well, I don't remember any of it. That's how much of an accomplishment that was. I was in quite a buzz. Now, later on, these Toastmaster skills came in quite useful for me and helped me with my career and my social life. An example of my career, I was on a big project at that time with more than a quarter of the people where I worked were on. And then suddenly, the whole project just suddenly ceased. It stopped. And I was suddenly competing with all the other people in that project for the remaining few, few jobs that were available. And the job fair had me designated as a very demeaning position. It's the only thing they could find. And even that probably would have ended up in me getting laid off before long. So this was an important time to have some skills to promote myself, which I wouldn't have had if I hadn't joined Toastmasters. I wouldn't have had a mentor to help me get into Toastmasters. Bottom line, with the skills that I had, not only in being able to speak, but the social contacts I had made through Toastmasters to know who to talk to and where I worked, to get an interview, because on paper, I didn't have the qualifications for the job that represented a tremendous promotion for me. Made the contacts, got the, got the interview, and of course, once I had the interview, I nailed the interview again because of my ability to communicate well and present myself well. The fact that I have been effectively doing that sort of work for many years helped too because I was working above my pay grade. Now I, it finally paid off. So I got the big promotion, did very well with the rest of my career, and I give that because my mentor, even before she became my mentor, is helping me become a great public speaker and Toastmaster, Adam Toastmaster.